So he says, my interlocutor, yeah, my interlocutor, um, that is the guy I'm arguing with. So oh, is, see, big words that, make you smart. See, he's he smart. He is intelligent. He's smart. He has an interlocutor. <laughs> yeah. Makes me think of uh, Jean-Luc Picard, for those who really want an Easter egg. Um, my interlocutor was insisting that the word shall, verse 9, chapter 9, verse 3, the word shall necessitates a command for people to eat meat and to not do so is rebellion against God. Other uses of the word shall as well as ontology, were both cited as proof of this. So he's doing theology by English grammatical tense. Danger. Danger. Yes. Okay. Tense. Shall is a tense word. It's not even a word. It's not a word in Hebrew. It's a tense. Right? We use this word to make our words mean different things, and they don't mean all the things the Hebrew one means. Okay? Because what you're doing is saying every statement of there's a future is therefore a commandment that you must obey. Right? That's his argument. And before we go on, let me just say, your friend, and, and you guys might have had a great argument, your friend's ignorant to make this argument. Okay? He's ignorant. The word shall does not necessitate a command. The word shall, especially in this instance, necessitates a promise. And if you can't distinguish between commands and promises, you can have a hard, hard time making friends. Let me tell you. 